Pennsylvania and Georgia could be states that have split ticket voters. You could see a Josh Shapiro, Mehmet Oz voter. Mm -hmm. You could see a Brian Kemp, Raphael Warnock voter. We just had this interview with Dick Morris, who suggests in his headline piece, is the GOP about to blow it? And he cites this uh, spate of early voting to suggest that uh, Democrats are uh, manning the polls long before Election Day, as they did in 2020, and the GOP has not learned any lessons from it. What's your take on that? Well, with all due respect to Dick Morris, I would disagree with that, and for a few reasons. One, yes, early voting does tend to favor Democrats. However, voting behaviors changed as a result of 2020, and so did voting laws. Georgia's a great example of that, where early voting has become more accessible. You're seeing more voters show up when that was being touted as Jim Crow 2.0 by the Democrats. In 2018, we saw as a country roughly about 30 percent of voters went and voted early. In 2020, that number jumped to around 60 percent. And so do you think we're, do I think we're going to look at another 60% early vote turnout? No. 2020 was an extraordinary year. I do expect that number to kind of fall somewhere in between the 30 and the 60. Maybe a 45 or a 50% of early vote will happen. That's how voters will. But I think it's more indicative of a voting behavior change than it is uh, something to say that Democrats are easily or are outperforming Republicans because 2020 not only changed voting beha behavior, but laws have changed subsequent to that in states that make it easier for people to early vote. So I think those things all kind of put together say that there is enthusiasm in this election. However, it doesn't necessarily mean it's enthusiasm for Democrats. Mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong here and, and uh, make me believe otherwise, but I'm... I'm uh Seeing all of uh, the polling out there, I'm seeing all these talking heads on television suggesting uh, that the GOP is spiking the ball before they've actually scored a touchdown here. And th the best way to stimulate Democratic voters is to declare victory beforehand. I mean, they, you, you might be even inspiring them. Well, I mean... There's nothing to say right now that Democrats have won anything, and there's nothing to say Republicans have won anything either, right? I'm a lifelong Buffalo Bills fan, and we're having a, an exceptional football season, but until we win the Super Bowl, we haven't won anything. It's the same thing with elections. If Republicans want to win, it means our turnout the vote. Republican voters are more likely to show up on Election Day. That's a fact. However, early voting and voting patterns changing does matter, especially to a key independent swing block that we haven't seen modeled in this fashion with new laws in these states. Mm -hmm. So I think there's really an opportunity here that things are still trending toward Republicans, especially when you look at the generic ballot, you look at Biden's approval rating, and you look at what the most important issues are for the American people. They not only is it the economy and inflation and crime, all of which Republicans do better with in polling, but Democrats don't want to talk about those issues because they just assume the American people will thank them for the Inflation Reduction Act when, in fact, it's been a driver of inflation in this country. So I still think Republicans have the strong case mm -hmm. to make here in November that things are going our way. Let's look at a couple key states. I want to turn to Pennsylvania uh, because we've it's been a week or so now since we had the Fetterman debate, that debacle for uh, John Fetterman. Um, I've seen a couple of polls which suggest that Oz has picked up since that debate. Have you seen anything to indicate that? Yeah, of the last five public polls that have come out, all have indicated, uh, except for the one that came out today, New York Times, Siena, before that, the five prior had Dr. Oz starting to lead in those polls. Uh, the New York Times, Siena one, I believe, had Fetterman up around five. But again, that's still Dr. Oz closing the gap. And that, with Listen, that, poll, that debate I, I, was political. Uh, Aaron, I think that that poll, yep. that New York Times poll, which you just cited there, was completed before the debate. Am, am I wrong about that? I think you're right about that, and that's a very key point as well, Doug. Thank you for, for pointing that out, because what happened with Fetterman in that debate was political malpractice by his team. He's never been a good debater. He was never a strong debater before his stroke, but that was never a format that would have suited him. And, the, and Pennsylvanians saw not only his struggle, but his lack of clarity, his lack of answers, even on things like fracking and crime, really important issues for Pennsylvania voters. I still see Pennsylvania as a toss-up, but leaning Republican. And turning to Georgia now, another abortion accuser, uh, facing um, Herschel Walker. Uh, any, any trends one way or the other in that state? 
you know, I think that right now we continue to see the polls close. Uh, all indicating right now is that this race sits within the margin of error. So it is going to be incumbent upon that key demographic of independent voters and who is talking about what matters most to them. I think a lot of Georgian voters are kind of putting uh, the other noise around Herschel Walker to the side. They're looking at their pocketbook issues. And when, again, that happens, it favors Republicans over Democrats, including uh, Raphael Warnock. But Pennsylvania and Georgia could be states that have split ticket voters. You could see a Josh Shapiro, Mehmet Oz voter. Mm -hmm. You could see a Brian Kemp, Raphael Warnock voter. Uh, and, and quickly, in the time that we have left, Arizona trends one way or the other. Arizona is moving toward Republicans. You're seeing that gap close uh, in both the gubernatorial race where uh, Carrie Lake is ahead now, and you're seeing Blake Masters starting to make an impressive close here at the end. That Senate race is probably the strongest toss-up in the country. And right now, with the surge behind Blake Masters, I actually think that he is moving to the front spot. Hopefully that's a race we can pick up, but the gubernatorial race is one I feel much more confident about for Republicans. Aaron Preen, thank you very much. Always good to talk to you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Doug McKelway, and thank you for watching Centerpoint. We hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Leave a comment below and keep the conversation going by sharing this video with a friend who needs to see it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow.